all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our main event of the evening. From the beautiful new Pachanga Casino and Resort, the big, the bad, and the beautiful. Brought to you by Goose and Tudor Promotions, Pachanga Resort, Budweiser, the King of Beers, and Fox Sportsnet. Your judges appointed for this bout are Dave Nelson, John Schlor, Doyle Danny Millsap, and your referee and man in charge, Pat Russell. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to separate the men from the boys. Let's get ready to box on Fox. For the IBF Cruiserweight World Championship title elimination bout, scheduled for 12 rounds. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks, weighing in at 190 pounds with a record of 16 wins, two losses, 10 of those wins coming by way of knockout. He is the number 10 rated contender in the IBF from Maywood, Illinois, Jason Robinson. And to my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks, weighing in at a very fit 189 and three quarter pounds with a record of 64 wins, four losses, two draws, 40 win of those wins coming by way of knockout. From Los Angeles, California, by way of the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, he is the former two-time world champion and number four IBF contender, James Lights Out Tony. James, all right, here's the line right here, so you know, right there. There's the line right there. 12 round title elimination bout. Good luck to both fighters. Touch him up. Let's go. Come out at the belt. And here are the rules once more. No three knockdown rule, nor standing game busy. count. Fighter can't be saved with the bell in any round, including the final, the headbutt rule. We go to the cards after the fourth round. So Tony says he's fit, he here. looks fit, he is loose. Now let's see if he's got the goods. I noticed yesterday when they had their little pose off after the weigh-in that Jason Robinson really looked much taller than I even expected in seeing the stats over James Lights out Tony. Tony, just a bigger guy, despite the fact that uh, there is not that much weight difference between them, but if you just look at the, the body size structure of these two. I think Robinson's game is going to be to stick and move and make Tony chase him. Arnie Rosenthal, his manager, calls him the most disciplined fighter I've ever been around in my career. So he'll need to stick to a game plan here against Tony. He not only is just an excellent fighter with a fighter's mentality, but really knows a lot of tricks, really knows what to do in that ring, knows how to set a trap for an opponent, knows how to turn his body, knows how to block a punch with the shoulder. I mean, this guy is an intelligent fighter in that ring. You know, he, he is, and yet there have been times when I've done James Tony's fights or I've seen James Tony fight that he, he does. He's got all the tools in the bag. He just doesn't always use all the tools. Now, he says he's a different guy, and that's what we'll see tonight. All right, vehicle jam, step out. He's determined to not only win the fight, but to knock Robinson out. You heard him tell that to Sean O'Grady earlier tonight. Jason Robinson is a former kickboxer, a three-time kickboxing champion, says he was able to make the transition pretty good. He got tagged with a good short right hand from James Tony there. And Sean O'Grady, uh, you don't often see, very frankly, kickboxers translate into good fighters. No, it's because they don't plant their feet. What they try to do with Robinson is try to make him settle down more, dig those feet into the canvas. If you're trying to kick six kicks around, you're not really going to plant your feet. With his feet planted, he can punch a bit harder. Robinson trying to work the jab. It's not a powerful jab. Fighting from that southpaw stance, and I tell you, that has been using to any fighter in, 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 in boxing. You, you jab with the right hand, your cross is a left cross, and you're throwing a right hook. The, the punches come at you from different angles. Although, James, Tony, you guys talked about it, you alluded to it in the last, in the last conversation about how 
he has been around the block. He knows what he's doing inside the ring. He probably has been his own worst enemy in the sport of boxing. You talked about his lackluster performances. Sometimes he falls asleep in these fights. And hopefully he doesn't do that here. Well, he says he's a different guy. You saw him switch up for a moment. He went softball for just a moment there. Yeah, I think he was hearing me talking about how confusing that is. Yeah. I think he's doing a good job of body punching here, getting within range. Don't get in a hurry. You know what? You're a professional. Let's see what your, other, what your opponent has. Take your time. Get well to deal with. End of the first round. He knows all those tricks. Yeah, he talks about Archie Moore. He talks about Sugar Ray Robinson, his guys uh, he likes to emulate. Ezra Charles, uh -huh. one of the two predominant super middleweights of the mid-90s, the other one, Roy Jones. And I tell you, even though those two fought, James Tony became a better fighter. This is a kid in Tony, who was a dead-end kid, street kid. He found a direction in boxing, and he just got enamored by the sport. He spent time reading articles. He spent time watching the tapes, watching fights, and learning as much as he could about the sport of boxing. It really works. Went left hand again for a and he took a shot from Rob. Jason Robinson seemed very calm about the whole thing. There were some words exchanged at the press conference this week between the two, but basically inspired by some comments from uh, Robinson's manager, Ernie Rosenthal, right, about the, about Tony Wait. being old and that his legacy is old, but uh, and Tony came in looking uh, strongly for Robinson at the press conference and Ernie Rosenthal. <laughs> but, you know, Robinson himself, he's very quiet. Uh, he's, uh, doesn't say much, but he admitted to me, he says, I'm real excited about this, and I'm very anxious. This was yesterday at the way, and I'm very anxious to get in that room. Real nice young man. In fact, uh, Arnie Rosenthal, quick to point out, he said the quiet kids are the ones you have to be concerned with. <laughs> Jason Robinson. Tony looking to load up with that right hand now against the southpaw, come right down the middle. And there it is. It was a little short, though. Southpaws are vulnerable to that punch. A real straight right hand down the pike, and a real wide left hook. The way they stand their positioning, they're vulnerable to that. Tony is one of, the, one of the great practitioners of the art of blocking a punch with the shoulder and coming Rock right back with the right cross immediately after that. So he'll try to take that jab if he can in that fashion and come back with the right cross right down the middle. This is experience talking. I mean, James Tony, he's been in there with everyone. He knows how to roll a punch. Sometimes it's easier. You don't use as much energy to take the punch and then counter with your own, which is something that he does quite well, that you're alluding to. For Robinson, he's got to get on his speed. First thing any aging fighter loses is his speed. Get that speed going, and then everything else kind of falls in place. Work that jab. He switches up again, goes lefty. Don't be afraid to hit James Tony with an uppercut. The way he leans over, he bends at the waist. He is vulnerable to that shot, but you got to throw it. Every time he goes lefty, that is Tony goes lefty. Robinson tags him. Robinson's got very nice, and very rangy, using the ring well. And he's keeping Tony off him pretty well. You can see the concentration. A little upset that he missed an opening there. Robinson frowning. Really concentrating. Coming to the end of round number two. Sunday is at 8 p.m. Beyond the Glory second season takes you inside the hidden world. Give me a little white here, buddy. Beyond the Glory presented by Acura Sundays at 8 only on Fox Sports Net. A lot of fighters in that one. Football players. Lawrence oh, Taylor, one of them that I liked a lot. I tell you, this round got off to a tremendous start. Both fighters came out and really put it on each other. Pretty even in that exchange. Tony was listening to uh, Freddie Roach in the corner. I think Freddie Roach has really become one of the outstanding trainers in the sport. Absolutely. In fact, uh, Fred, wipe that the current court. issue of KO Magazine uh, calls him the Eddie Futch of the 21st century. And wow. What a compliment that is. Good left hand, right hand on the drop hand by Tony. I like the new breed of 
trainers, many of them. Uh, Buddy McCurt, another fine trainer yes. coming up. Joe Goosen, Freddie Rhodes. Guys with a lot of years out in front of them now to, uh, to train fighters at a very high level. Rhodes was back in Atlantic City last night and here today for this fight. So, an amazing turnaround. <laughs> I think it's not dedicated. Tony's punch is caught on the arms of Robinson. These two body shots are pretty good, though. And Tony, this is typical of Tony because he has always been a fighter who likes to break down his opponent. He dissects them, uh, basically, Barry, then breaks them down bit by bit. I saw him do this even at, at the top of his game with a number of fighters. I think back again of the Prince Charles Williams fight, a typical example of that. James necessarily isn't a hurry fighter in that ring. The only time I ever saw him hurry was when he was fighting Tim Little at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles, and he got badly cut at the end of the third round. The referee told him he was going to give him one more round, and that was it. And he went out and took care of business, and he stopped Littles in the fourth round. That was an amazing moment in the uh, career of James Tony. But other than that, he usually likes to do it little by little. Sidestep. Sean O'Grady's with Arnie Rosenthal in the corner now of Jason Robinson. Sean? Yeah, and good instructions over here, guys, from Arnie Rosenthal. What made you say not to, not to stand in front of Tony this way for Robinson? It's the plan. the plan. Just keep moving, show him angles, keep that chair popping in his face, and take him into the deep water. He's following the plan perfectly. I can't ask for more. Coming into this fight, Arnie, you told me that you weren't you wasn't sure how Jason was going to react in this fight. A high, a high fight atmosphere, a lot of people, excitement, a lot of television. How's he doing? He's doing beautiful. No intimidation whatsoever. We're just 100% happy at this point. There's a lot of fight to go, though, Sean. As you know, this is scheduled for 12. Yeah, and you know how James Tony fights. He starts off kind of slowly, and then he builds to a crescendo. And he's an all-time pro. So. Yeah, and and, and what do you, Dave, how do you keep Jason this focused throughout this fight tonight? I think Tony will take care of that for us. Yeah. You just don't let up with James Tony. You have that man in front of you in the ring. You stay focused for 12 rounds. Oh, no you're joke. In trouble. <laughs> no joke. Otherwise, you're getting hurt. Uh, how do you keep him from kicking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we broke that habit a long time ago. <laughs> oh, he might want to now. All right. That's it. Arnie Rosenthal. Jason Robinson, he likes what he sees. Yeah, pretty good idea, I think, Rich. I mean, he's going in here with a, an idea of uh, how his man can best win this fight. Take him into deep water, he said. Well, I think Robinson's fighting a great round here. He's been on the move just a little bit, just enough to keep Tony off balance, flashing out that right jab. Tony hasn't been able to find him with too much in this round. But James just keeps trudging ahead, looking to wear out, out Robinson. But Robinson looks very calm and poised in there, fighting a good game plan. There he is. Tony getting a little bit more of a punching range, though. Discuss that time. I wonder if Tony might have hurt his hand or something. Tony has not done much in this round. He's been out hustled by the process in this round. Stay 
is right there. And now you have to ask yourself, oh, right. was that enough to win the round, though? I know just about how. James Tony is the great practitioner, turning the shoulder and the right hand follow, the counter. That's what we described for you earlier, and you just saw the prime example of it. And then there was another one right after that, too. Robinson actually didn't take a backward step. And his corner was all over after standing in front. Now, I will tell you, I still gave that round to Robinson. Even though I know the judges won't. <laughs> well, he had fought a tremendous round until then. I think Jason Robinson clearly won the first two minutes and 50 seconds of the round. But that was the best single punch of the fight. That was a hard, smashing right by James Tony. So whether or not he won the round for him, it did some damage. James is so cute in there, I'm telling you. You just saw that move we talked about, that turning of the shoulder and coming right back with the counter right. I don't know that anybody's done it better than in the last 10 years than James Tony. Uh, he's very crafty. Robinson is letting Tony into his punching range right now. Now that'll be disastrous for him. He needs to keep him out on the end of his punches, just like that. See, now, I don't think he can be right here for Robinson. Tony's looking for that counter right. Just an uppercut. Robinson looks just a tad hesitant, a little hesitant this round after eating that right hand in the last round. to get that jab to work to good effect. Left hand by Robinson in close quarters. Right hand by Tony, not quite as solid as the others. Whoa, 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 let him out, let him out. Stop punching, whoa, stop, step, break. Again, Tony giving him a lot of different angles, but not a bad round for Robinson again. And there's a right hand, and that is going to drop Robinson. Two, just like that. Three, that caught him right four, on the chin. Watch to me. Come here. Time. Well, it came right at the end of the round again. Two rounds in a row. And we told you he was loading up with the right hand, that he's been looking for the right hand. He found it several times in the round before that. And then the tremendous booming shot by James lights out, Tony. And it was almost lights out for Jason Robinson there. Still doesn't seem 100% back yet, Robinson. Tony comes right after, hits him with the right hand, and another right hand. Tony being aggressive in this round, not waiting. A oh, big right hand. I tell you, this is this is a one-punch fight in terms of what, how Tony can win it, but the counter rights. He's destroying Jason right Robinson corner. with right hands. He's found the man's weakness, exposed it. Look at him turn his shoulder. He's ready to launch that right hand again. I'm just waiting on it. You can just see. Robinson working the jab. Going to be a little more hesitant with that left hand, Will Robinson. I'm looking at his legs. They're not all there, Barry. Slapping right hand that time by Tony. Tony backing up for a second, then he just backed off. That'd be a good idea for Robinson to stay away from Tony in this round. Probably be a good idea to stay away from 12 rounds. Yeah, not a bad idea. I'll 
Russell Robinson seems to be pushing his punches a little bit more in this round. Sean O'Grady. Oh, experience is a great teacher, huh? See what James Tony did? He took Jason Robinson out to the deep water and then he drowned him. What he did is he, he took Jason Robinson's punches early. He rolled his shoulders, he turned, he Man, off the timed it properly, took his time, and then when the window was open, he goes for it. The window was open, now it's closed again, but when it was open, he was really trying to go for the KO. Guys, he's still kind of playing coy here, is Tony. Shake his knees, an old trick that Sugar Ray Leonard used to do. But he hasn't really gone for the gusto in this round. And Robinson has done a nice job, at least to this point. Tony just had it on his own way that was just kind of playing with Robinson this round. Still turning left handed at times, so Mary. You said most of the time in the early going, really was not an effective move for him, but he does, he does it just to show him different looks. Exactly. He's a pro, there's no question about it. No punches. Go back to court. Welcome back, round number seven now, and all of a sudden Tony is just controlling everything in this fight. Clean up my corner, first team. Well, Robinson bounced back pretty good in that last round. I really didn't think the way the previous round ended that he'd be able to make it through another round. I didn't either. I just thought that Tony kind of played with him a little bit in that round. That may have cost him the round, but he seems a little more intent on business here in round seven. Let's go back into the corner now of Jason Robinson. Sean O'Grady is back for Arnie Rosenthal. Sean. Thanks, guys. Arnie, in the fifth round, Jason down on the canvas. He got the camera, had a better sixth round than obviously the fifth. What did you do to, to keep him going in this fight? Uh, he's got a great. Uh, I mean, the focus is there, like I said from before. Yeah. But he's got the heart of a lion right now, and he's starting to come back here. But he lay, he lost that focus for that split second, and Tony fought 10 seconds of that round, and that was the 10 seconds he caught him in. The window of opportunity was open, and uh, Tony really tried to go for it. That's why he's James Stone. So how, how is his, his response between rounds? How, how does he sing? Fine. Seems like he's in this fight? Absolutely. What do you try to do to him at this point? What do you try to get him to do? Get back on the game plan, the one of the first four rounds for him. Which is? Stick and move, move to your right, and not drop your left hand like that. All right, I think he heard that. Jason Robin, they don't want him dropping his hands. You got to remain focused, guys. He's, and he still is dropping his hand a little bit. Hunter's in front. He just seems to have no defense for the counter right of Tony. And Tony is not throwing it a lot, but when he does, it's with intent. Tony's left hand has not been real effective in this fight. No, he's throwing it more now. It's almost like, let me just see if I can get this one. Well, guess what? <laughs> That's what he ended it with, baby. They talk about it in boxing. 
and you're looking at a real pro right now. Tremendous finish. There's the right, the left. Now get ready because he will finish it up. Oh, beautiful left hook, no doubt about it. That's a knockout shot. See that knee crumple up, and you could hear the punches landing. James Tony throwing punches with authority and finishing them off with authority. Very effective comeback fight for James Tony.